What's the value of cash right now, Mr. Paulson? I, I, um, I, it's nice to see cash, Tom, at least giving a positive yield of, of some merit, but I don't think it's the right asset to be in right now. Um, I think things are pretty unsustainable at the moment, um, and it's all tied to policy officials raising rates. Um, in, in this country, the 10-year yield is going straight north while commodity prices are collapsing, while inflation surprise index is falling, while, while the ISM's price surveys from service and manufacturers are, are falling out of bed, while inflation expectations in the bond market break, even rates are collapsing. Um, the, the dollar is, is, is simply out of control, and the upside is a reflection of, of yields. And I think, you know, something's got to change. It's gotten too extreme. And probably what changes is rates stop going up soon. And if that's the case, I think the stock market's going to have a good rip yet. Um, and I don't think you'll be pleased by putting too much in cash. But having some in cash, it's nice to have a, a bond market that's yielding something and a, a cash market that's yielding something. It certainly gives asset allocators or just people, uh, individuals, an opportunity to diversify some risks that they haven't had for quite some time. What's that call cool option you've got then, Jim, on a rip? What are you playing? Where are you sitting? What's the pocket of the market you want to be present in? Well, I, I, I think I, I look at this like coming out of a recession, uh, Jonathan. I, I, would, I would look at early cycle stocks. My favorite sector is the consumer discretionary sector. I think it's the one sector that's been most harmed by inflation. It destroys uh, not only their operations by squeezing their margins of the companies, but it destroys the confidence of their customer base. And so as inflation rolls over, I think those stocks come back to life. I'd also, you know, look at uh, growth stocks, particularly small cap growth. I, my favorite tilt would be towards small caps, which, by the way, have held up remarkably well in this last draft in the stock market here. Uh, since August, and I, I think that um, I, I would I would have some exposure there. I I also think that there's cyclicals beyond the uh, consumer discretionary that probably play like industrials and so and so forth. And I also think there could be a play on the dollar yet. I, I just think the dollar's too high; has got to come down. And I I don't know if I'd have a broad-based international bet right now, but I would maybe in emerging markets, excluding China. So, Jim, right now, Nike shares down 11 uh, percent in pre-market trading. A screaming buy? Uh, no, I don't have any particular preference to Nike, uh, <laughs> Lisa. I'm, 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 I, mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I, I know that you're, you're viewing this from a more big, uh, big picture sense, but uh, sure. I guess that the, the point that I was trying to make is what's the risk to the downside as you wait for the Fed to blink when the Fed's saying, we're not going to blink, and yeah. no, things are not breaking. It looks like actually financial stability is holding in just fine in the U.S. I, I think we're getting really close to a blink, and, and it'll probably be forced. It could be that we get a, you know, a, a really weak economic report. It could be that we get a really good inflation report. Probably more likely is something breaks. And you guys are bringing up things this morning that are starting to show some cracks in the foundation. And right now, if, if something breaks in the U.S. and it's a systemic problem, there's more downside risk in the stock market. But I think that the private balance sheets of the United States, both households and corporations, are very solid and they're very liquid. And the, the banking industry is squeaky clean in this country, and the chance of a systemic balance sheet break here, I think, are low. So I think something breaks, but if it's not systemic, it will cause a pause in the tightening cycle across the globe, and that could be a really big positive here for the stock market. Jim, that's the bit I struggle point, with. You know, can, you, can you make that final point, and then I'll come back to you? Just take the stage. You've got the stage. The, Okay, I, I just want to make one point that, you know, Powell seems bent on, you know, uh, channeling his inner, inner Volcker moment. And the entire Volcker moment that actually occurred in 80 to 81 there, when Paul Volcker took the funds rate from 9.5% in August, I think, to 20% by December 
Um, the, the stock market after that, 81, 82, fell by a total of 27%. And I think it's important to recognize we're already down 25% in this country already. So yeah. even if we're having a Powell moment, you know, it's interesting. Volcker had a Volcker moment after 15 years of runaway inflation in this country. The Powell Fed is wanting to do a Volcker moment after 15 months of high inflation. I don't think the two are comparable and don't need the same approach.